Well, hello, party people. What up? Uh, Trey Radcliffe here, and I thought I'd show you a really cool feature in Aurora HDR 2018 that a lot of people don't use. Okay, I'll kind of deconstruct this image. I took this about a week ago in Tokyo, and this is the final result. Uh, the original shot, the original raw looked like, looked like that, you know, kind of boring, blah. Um, by the way, this was a handheld shot at ISO 500 F4. Um, took it out of a third story window there. And uh, just a single raw photo, right? That's all you need with Aurora HDR 2018. Um, and just as an interesting sense of perspective, let me show you this other photo here. Um, this I took about mm, a year and a half ago at virtually the same place. Now I'm gonna process these two things differently, all right? I often change my processing style based on my mood or how I'm feeling or what I feel like the, the picture needs, okay? This one obviously is very bright, uh, very colorful, because I wanted it to be like that, right? I want it to be like the shocking, you know, how colorful and bright Shinjuku is. It's kind of a, a sweet assault on the eyes, okay? But if we look over here, see this tall blue thing, okay, this is the Hotel Gramercy, and right underneath it is a movie theater, actually, where I saw a movie. And there's a little, see that little Godzilla peeking? That's actually been there for years. And now there's a Godzilla movie coming out. And so they put the poster right by that. Anyway, so this is a, like an eight story movie theater. It's huge. And, oh, I just noticed it's called Godzilla Road. Really? Wow, it's all coming together. Um, I, it's funny, I even noticed these details in my photos when I zoom in. I'm like, wow, I didn't even notice that. Anyway, here's, see these windows right here? So I was standing in the third floor window when I took, um, this photo. So this is looking back the other direction. You see? And for this one, obviously I've decided not to go so hardcore colorful. It's still really HDR'd up, but what I've done, this is the thing I'm gonna concentrate on today, is I've done some uh, split toning, which kind of gives it this um, emulsive film look, right? this cross-processing kind of look. Um, so once again, if we slide back and forth with this before after thing, you can see what I've done is kind of washed over it. It, it is brighter, there's better um, details, uh, thanks to the HDRness, all the noise is gone. There wasn't that much noise to begin with, with the uh, 500 ISO, uh, but really it kind of has this greenish blue tinge to it in the darks. The brights have a little bit of an orange. So let me deconstruct this one and show you what happened, okay? So you can see I have four layers here which is another nice feature of Aurora, that you can have layers where you do different things in different parts, okay? And this layer four is where I, I'm gonna go through each of these layers and show you what I did, but layer four, the layer I'm on now, is where I did this kind of cross-processing look, okay? So if you come down here, uh, this is a very fun area, and I don't see many people uh, messing with this, color toning, okay? Uh, I think this is a very uh, powerful area, and I don't see enough people using it, because I always like these shots that have a bit of a film look to them. What does it mean? Okay, what, let's back up a second. What does color toning mean? Well, you know, typically you have like a black and a white, okay? You have kind of black's point, your, your, your blacks in your photo, and your whites in your photo, okay? When you do color toning, there's no longer blacks and whites, okay? It pushes the blacks, shadows, into a color space and it takes the whites, the super bright parts and moves them into another, another color space. So sometimes it's nice to have complementary colors there on the color wheel and play together, okay? In this case, I've chosen sort of a blue and a yellow. Now it's hard to tell here because these look very faded, these two colors look very faded. But you can adjust them here, like in the shadows. I can make it much more saturated if I wanted to. And you can see that's just like way too bright, that's ridiculous. Uh, so you can bring it down just a little bit, all right? And you can see as I bring this up, it also affects how saturated this is. That's why this looks so dull, like such a dull blue, but that's, in this case, that's what we want, okay? And then you can also move around the hue to different color spaces. Sometimes I do keep it a bit saturated just to look at what's happening with the different colors and how they're playing around, okay? And then I get on a color that I, that I like and it feels good, sort of this light bluish color, and then I drop down the saturation. You know, not down to zero, because that's how it was. I'm just gonna bring it up just a little bit, okay? Kind of has a feeling like the, it's a cool city, right? The cool city lights are making a, kind of a, a bluish shadow in, in there. And then of course, this is the highlights, okay? I can 
really amp this up. This is a little more uh, subtle, uh, so I could probably go a little higher with this one. Um, and then again, you can move this around and you really probably don't want them both blue. You could, but that kind of has a super blue effect. I'll take it down here into the, the orange space, okay? And last, down here in balance, you can say, what do you want to focus on here more, the shadows or the highlights? To me, it's more about the shadows and that really gives it that nice shadowy look. Okay, so that's that. Um, let me go down to the next layer and show you what happened. Uh, this is the layer in which I did some image radiance to give it some glow. If you want to see where I colored, let me hit B for brush and let me turn on the mask. You can see like everywhere that I, I did a little, you know, tap, tap revolution, it's going to get a little bit more glowy. Here I set my brush at about 50% because I didn't want everything to be too glowy. It can make it a little bit blurry. Mm. Blurry isn't the right word, but if you do too much, it can have the feel of blurriness. Okay, so that's where I did that thing to give it a little bit of glow. All right. Uh, here is where I really HDR'd it up. Okay, um, if you want to see where I colored, where I brushed, let me turn on the mask here. Basically, in all the signs of the people down here, um, what uh, levers did I move? I moved to HDR enhance. I also really cranked up HDR structure, move the softness to the left to make it sharper, and increase the boost. All right, so that's what that one was about. And then finally, on the bottom layer, um, there was a lot of noise up in the sky. Okay, um, so I uh, went down here to HDR denoise and I increased that. And you can see that I just painted purely up in the sky to get rid of that noise. Okay. So you know you don't have to be afraid to shoot at ISO 500, 800, probably all go up to 6400. You'll be you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Don't you worry. Okay. So then we get to the final image, um, and that is this. Okay. We can once again look at a uh, before and after, before and after. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that little idea. Uh, don't be afraid to play with some of these other tools, and I hope you guys are loving. Roar HDR 2018 as much as I do. And if you're watching this from Apple, thanks again for making us Apple's Mac app of the year. It was a big, big surprise to uh, me and the team at Skylum. Uh, we thank you guys. We love you very much. All right, you guys, take it easy, and I'll see you next time.